So what do you got? David Found here with a, another tutorial. I'm going to try and keep it as brief as possible, but you know me. If you've watched my videos, they're very rarely brief, but they're certainly in depth and uh, very intuitive. So we're going to continue with the, uh, well, a, a tutorial today on using the latest version of Adobe Lightroom, even though what I'm going to show you now is about spot removal. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's the latest version or versions previous to this because they all have the spot removal uh, facility and function on them. Uh, but as we're doing this, we'll also just touch on the new uh, gradient filters uh, and of course the masking ability that you have in the new version of the 2022 version of Lightroom. So here we are with the with Lightroom open. This is one shot that I was editing a bit earlier and because um, because the fact that there was extremely bright sunlight and there was no uh, detail in the sky, I decided um, to give it a bit of a boost by using the radial filter. Um, and that's, that's this thing here. Uh, as you can see with the new version, I've already done a tutorial on the new masking features and functions on Lightroom. Um, and I just want to touch on it very briefly because I've used the radial filter here just to reduce the intensity of the sun which is blazing through the camera lens and of course causing great flare which is great I like that I like to see the flare a bit of flare in your life it doesn't uh, go to waste does it so we thought we'd use that as the radio filter. As you, as you can see now with the latest version we have uh, overlays and here we've got three different uh, uh, layers uh, basically three different masks which is the sky the foreground and the sun so now I've got the ability to work on that as a radial filter and I can uh, do modifications to and make changes to how I set that radial if you use shift if you use shift and drag uh, that will maintain its concentricity it'll main maintain the concentric lines uh, and that's basically just a very brief introduction to using some of the masks on this version of Lightroom. Anyway, let's get on with the uh, what we're going to touch on today. If you have been shooting, as I have just recently been shooting on some mountains, um, and it doesn't matter where, the, where you were shooting, but you did a time lapse, and what is very annoying with a time lapse is that you've got hundreds, maybe thousands of pictures, and those pictures have substantial dust problems of course sensor dust which you don't detect when you're in bright circumstances and you can't even see it yourself when you're taking a shot you can't see sensor dust um, or unless you've got a very very clear very very uh, bland uh, uh, subject to shoot then you might just see them but it's very rare you'll see it until you get back to your uh, production suite so here we have Lightroom we've got the sky is quite bland so I'm going to fix the sky but if I start fixing the sky and then I start to realize for instance if I just do a quick read radial so not radial uh, a linear gradient if I just drag the linear linear gradient down and then just dehaze that I love using de dehaze by the way I just dehaze that we're going to start seeing let's just uh, clear that off we're going to start seeing where there are dust marks there's plenty of dust on that sensor do loads and loads and loads of dust let's just push that a bit further and as you can see around here there is loads and loads and loads of dust i don't know how there's so much dust on my camera sensor but i have it so let's just go back to where we were let's just um reset that and uh we're just going to uh let's just go back to the gradient and let's just remove let's just remove the uh, the dehaze okay so what we can do before we start obviously you don't want to have to go through hundreds and thousands of pictures removing the dust from every single picture and you don't need to do that because the dust remains in the same position the only difficulty is if you want to then zoom in post-production is that those dust spots dust spots that you clean up are going to be shifting around and sort of causing a bit of jittery noise on your image so the advice is that remove your dust spots but in post-production don't start to zoom in on your shot because that is going to mess everything up all right so here we are with the ability now well not the ability now but it's always been the ability on Lightroom is to 
uh, select uh, your dust, your spot remover, okay, and visualize the spots. But if I just click on that now, as you can see, I've removed a few of the spots already. And ideally, what we do is remove all these spots that are, as you can see, are being visualized. In the foreground, it doesn't really matter. The sky is where the big problems are. Um, unless you've got spots that you see clearly on somebody's face or complexion, that's different. But what we're going to deal with is the main issue of uh, sensor dust is sky problems. So if we just zoom into this, I'm just going to go 2%, uh, let's just go 100%. Zoom in, as you can see, on the left here, there are no dust spots anymore because I've cleaned those up. Uh, but there are dust spots on the remaining area. So now with the dust remover, I can enlarge that by just using the scroll wheel. If I, pre if I press shift at the same time, that changes the amount of feathering. I like to feather this quite a lot, maybe 80%, and just sort of blodge these out, these dust marks. Here we are. So we're just going to remove them. It's very nice to have the ability to visualize the spots. That might not have been a, a sensor spot. Sometimes you're going to see maybe birds flying past. But generally, sensor spots are going to be particular, quite particular to the, uh, the form that they are. OK, so that's pretty much cleaned up that section. I can just go back to the fit. I'll just take off visualize spots. Now, hopefully, since I've done that, done that I can now uh, synchronize that with every other picture on this, on this timeline and that will clean up all those spots. Advice is don't do that and then go in and start zooming in on your picture. Use the frame you have, set it the way it is and don't start zooming in because as soon as you zoom in you're going to see those dust spots shifting around. Of course it's going to be quite jittery and quite messy. So now what I need to do is just select all the images except this one at the end and I'm going to synchronize. I'm going to go to synchronize going to go done on there first of all. I'm going to go to synchronize and uh, we're just going to rem remove all those and we're going to just use um, spot removal. Okay, that's the only thing we want at this time. We're just going to do that for now. Okay, synchronize and that's going to take a while to do that, to synchronize and make sure that those ooh, 1530 pictures from the time lapse of a sunset are going to be cleaned up with those spots. What we'll do, we'll come back in a few minutes with the outcome of that. Okay, so we're back. Uh, Lightroom has done its magic. It has processed 1,530 images <laughs> in a few minutes, just a, well, not even, not even a minute actually, pretty quick. So has it done the job that we wanted it to do? Well, it's synchronized from uh, the second image that we started to process. Image one can be removed for this, uh, for this uh, uh, tutorial because we're not using that but basically I've synchronized now all those images uh, across the board all the way through and what we should have is a clean a clean plate to work with basically there should be no spots on any of these images but the way we can test this uh, obviously with it being such a bland sky it's usually quite hard to detect uh, where the spots would be. So we're going to use the, just going to scroll down the timeline and just randomly choose any of these slides, any of these images, and we're going to choose the uh, spot removal tool and we're just going to say, and just click on visualize spots. And as you can see, there are, well, yes, there are a couple just left over. Maybe they, they were on the first frame anyway, but uh, uh, no, they're not on some of those. So basically that's cleaned up uh, over a thousand images which saves you a lot of time doing that manually obviously. So there we are with the spot removal. Uh, now what that means is I can now continue uh, editing and producing this, uh, this uh, time lapse whereby we have no annoyance uh, of the of the spots, the sensor spots which is very very annoying that these manufacturers don't use particularly the Sony A7R that I use and Sony cameras generally, the uh, mirrorless cameras, full frame mirrorless, I wish they would uh, have the shutter, uh, actually, sh you know, the, the me mechanical shutter shutting down and closing off some sort of cover when you close, turn off the camera. So it at least covers the sensor, particularly when you're changing the lens. Just a bit of a gripe 
uh, at uh, the camera manufacturers. I believe that Nikon have now introduced that with their latest uh, mirrorless cameras and good on them. So uh, great if you can uh, buy a camera that has a way of at least protecting the sensor from dust when you're changing a lens uh, and just for generic purposes because it's so damned annoying having sensor dust uh, to clean up every time you need to do a shoot and you're never quite sure. You can clean your sensor all day long and when it comes time to shooting you still have dust spots everywhere which is really annoying but uh, this is cleaned up fairly well and of course as the sun set goes deeper into the uh, to, while, while the sun sets into those mountains uh, it's very 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 rare you're going to see uh, any more spots uh, as the sun disappears but that means that uh, I've basically cleaned up over a thousand five hundred images and now uh, I can continue processing this time lapse and when it's done I'll show you what it looks like <laughs> there we go and this is what it looks like as I've just said and there we go that's the crazy time lapse with the incredibly crazy sky but I just thought I'd do that just to show you uh, that we took the images from Lightroom we then processed by removing all those spots then we added a bit of flare uh, dehaze and we messed around it with a bit with a little bit and that's the final result. That's a time lapse on the mountains of Merwong National Park. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you've got any questions, please post them in the comments box. And anything else, please subscribe and stay with me uh, here at uh, YouTube. David Found, thank you. Bye-bye.